From the Bible, we gain insight into the glorious state of the black man. During the first 2,000 years of recorded human history, our ancestors had one of the greatest and most developed civilizations on the planet. Their domination actually lasted longer than other civilizations. The ancient Egyptian distinguishes himself, herself, by the remarkable things they have done, some of which we cannot easily repeat. The Japanese, for example, tried to build a pyramid. They had to be thrown out. They made an absolute mess over acres of territory. These people were, had done something very remarkable. According to Nahum, Nahum chapter 3 and verse 9, he says that the people from Ethiopia and Egypt had a power that was boundless, limitless, without limit. And that was written in 714 B.C., right around the same time that Isaiah 18 was written. So what we're dealing with here is that we're dealing with a, a group of people, black people, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that uh, were basically presidents of the planet, if you will. Uh, people who were in world domination. One biblical character named Taharqa is mentioned in the Bible that came from that dynasty. And this brother was so bad that God said to the Israel king that he was supposed to help, all I got to do is just mention his name and your enemies will run. So that's how uh, much of a terror Tahaka was, and he came from this 25th dynasty. Yes, his past was glorious, but in time, black civilization would not have the world dominance that it once enjoyed. History records all too vividly the tremendous fall of the black man. He occupied one of the highest pinnacles of human greatness, but unfortunately could not stay there. Let's now begin to explore the downfall of the black descendants. Before the harvest, when the bud is perfect and sour grape is ripening in the flower, he will both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. Isaiah 18 is a prophetic word concerning African Americans, uh, black people, people of color, and it talks about how God will uh, discipline us in the last days. It talks about before harvest. Jesus said, harvest is the end of the world. Just before harvest, he said he's going to cut off the twigs of the tree. The tree represents our people. We were essentially railroaded and, 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 and stripped from our land, uh, stolen uh, into captivity, uh, sold by our own brothers and sisters, the kings of the tribes in Africa. Uh, a dastardly deed was, was really done to the, the African. And as a result of being sold into captivity by his own brothers, uh, being at the, uh, the mercy of, of white slave owners and white slave traders, uh, being uh, divided and conquered, uh, having our women sold from under us, having our children sold, uh, crossing the middle passage and, and sometimes uh, so sick and so impoverished that we would throw ourselves overboard to find death there. Uh, when you think about the bottom of the ladder, <laughs> we had hit rock bottom. Our people, at the pinnacle of human achievement, experienced their last flicker of world dominance with the fall of the 25th dynasty. They were so great that they got beside themselves. When you think you don't need God anymore, trouble is coming. God permitted the evil of slavery of the black man. While slavery was never God's plan, he used it eventually to bring the black man back to himself. You know, we talk about coming over on the slave ships. We talk about the struggle of that. We talk about all this. We even lift up whites or whoever brought us over and all that. But, but the thing that, that blacks need to hear is that millions died on that journey. Mm -hmm. Millions died from West Africa coming here. But yet, and so we're the sons and daughters of survivors. Much like in the case of Joseph, when Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers, went into Egypt, became the prime minister of Egypt, was used greatly by God to bring life and health, not only to Egypt, but to the world. I believe that God has the same redemptive plan for Africans, that he has literally taken what was meant for evil, and he has turned it as only God can. He has turned it to good.